Let's take a look at what's happening out here in these digital streets. Entertainer, business mogul, and author Steve Harvey, he's trending on TikTok and on Black Twitter. Why? Because he made some comments back in 2010 explaining why he believes men and women can't be friends. We remain your friends in hopes that one day there'll be a crack in the door, a chink in the armor, and trust and believe that guy that you think is just your buddy, he will slide in that crack <laughs> the moment he gets the opportunity. 99.9% .9 of us think that way. As usual, social media had a lot to say. One of those people was our next guest. She joins me to unpack it all. Her name is Yvette Dion, and she is a journalist a pop culture critic, and a brilliant analyst. Uh, let's start with uh, your tweet, Yvette. You said, one day we're going to revisit Steve Harvey's relationship guru era and how he denigrated black single women to line his own pockets. Woo, you came out with the smoke. You wanted all of it. So let, let's, let, let's talk about that. Yeah, I did want all the smoke. Um, Steve Harvey is not the problem per se him as himself is not the problem it's more so that he is a representative of what i call a dating industrial complex that existed for about five years in which there were a whole crop of black male dating experts essentially telling black women that the reason why they were single and unpartnered and unable to get married is because of all of the flaws within them so if you changed everything about yourself, um, then you would be chosen. And so the fact that this is coming up 10 years later is not at all alarming or surprising to me. It's the same reckoning that's happening with a lot of things that happened in the early 2010s as we have more cultural hindsight about the damage and the harm that those things caused. Okay, so somebody watching this show, in fact, lots of people watching this show are gonna say, well, what's the harm in saying that men and women can't be friends, or at least that he doesn't have female friends because of these dynamics, that men are just waiting. They say they're your friend, they say they're the homie, but they're just waiting for you to break up with your dude. They're just waiting for you to get single. They're just waiting for you to get desperate or needy or vulnerable, and then they're gonna pray. Some would argue he's simply, def he's actually defending the interests of women by showing how predatory some men and, and selfish some men can be. What do you say to that? I would say that he needs to address men in that respect. So if he believes that men, and especially black men, are predatory in their platonic friendships, then that's a conversation that he needs to direct at other black men instead of directing it at black women. My entire perspective here is quite simple. Steve Harvey is taking his own individual perspective and experience and lived experience and trying to apply it in large sway to black people at large. And you just run the risk as he did of making it seem as if an entire community is the problem. If he can't have women friends because he can't control himself, by all means, that's a decision he should make for himself. But to say that that is the case for all black people and all black men and all black women that we cannot have platonic friendships, that we can't even have play cousins because there, we run the risk of romantically becoming involved. It's both misguided, it's wrong, and it puts the onus on women to fix that scenario. Right, it, it, it's, it seems like it normalizes the idea that men are going to be predators as some unshakable reality and all we can do is tell women how to avoid it. I mean, it's the same thing goes into rape culture, it's the same thing that goes into all these other things where, uh, where we say, here's how you avoid getting harmed, here's how you avoid letting men do trifling stuff, as opposed to, as you said, holding men accountable. It's an interesting thing, Steve Harvey's uh, dating uh, empire, or dating advice mm -hmm. empire, is largely targeted toward women. Why not target toward men? Men are less acceptable in that way of they are not going out to spend twenty nine ninety nine on a book to teach them how to date. It is just not, it's just not. And at the time, if we're thinking about 2009 and 2010, Steve Harvey was a part of a, a whole movement around why black women are single. There were articles in the Washington Post at the time and whole segments on Nightline's focused specifically on why black women are single. And he just capitalized on that and profited from it by offering advice on how to fix that problem, rather than simply being okay with, you know, some black women are going to be unpartnered. If they are happy with that and satisfied with that, it is not a crisis 
because black women choose to be single. But that's the way that it was framed. And so he just stepped in to profit from it, not only, of course, with um, his book series, but also with the adaptation of the movies that became ensemble romantic comedies. So to those, again, watching, who going to say, well, look, there's some dudes watching. It's like, look, I'm trifling. <laughs> and there's some sisters watching this. They'll be like, every dude I know do that to me. How do we begin to reimagine our relationships, our social relationships, our romantic relationships, our friendships, so that we don't have to make those words our reality? How can we have healthy, functional uh, relationships that aren't all uh, under, underneath it, you know, brimming with, with, with predation and, and, and exploitation? Right. Open and honest communication is essential to that. If you know that you have a friend who you are attracted to and you are trying to hide it and crouch it in a friendship, you are doing a disservice to that person and a disservice to yourself. So being open and honest about what it is that you want from someone and being okay with being rejected in that, we know based on things that we see in our news all the time that rejecting someone could lead to violence against you, especially if it's done in a public setting. So, so often we are settling for I'll just be this person's friend to stay safe. That is a part of it is openly and honestly communicating about what it is that you want and men have to become comfortable with being rejected and it not turn into a violent situation. And then the other part of that, and the big part of that, and something I'm really big on, our boundaries are really important. They're important in, in friendship, they're important in romantic relationships, they're important in your familial relationships. When you have really good boundaries, there's no way someone can step over them if you're not, if you are reinforcing them. And so if people are openly and honest communicate, if they set really clear boundaries, if they are very clear about what it is that they want, we'll have much healthier relationships. Um, and then the last part of that is men have to hold one another accountable about how they are in relationship with women. It's not always the woman's fault that something goes wrong. Men need to talk to other men about how to be in healthy relationships with women and how to be in healthy platonic friendships with women. So maybe instead of thinking like a man, we should be thinking about someone who wants to dismantle the patriarchy, thinking like somebody who wants to dismantle sexism and misogyny. Uh, and if we do that, maybe this type of advice won't be so attractive, won't be so marketable um, to everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. If we think about All the right. way in which we form relationships. Oh. No, 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 I, I don't want to cut you off. I just, we're running out of time, but I, I, I wanted to say, first of all, thank you for joining us. You got to come back because there's a whole lot of this stuff, <laughs> internet or wisdom and relationship advice that people be giving out that's just trash. And we need you to come back to help us make sense of it, along with a, a range of other issues around gender, sexuality, politics, race. I don't want to put you in a relationship box, but you just are so insightful. This is incredibly <laughs> helpful. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Let us know what you're thinking. Do you agree with Steve? Or do you actually hate patriarchy? Hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at BNC News. And be sure to visit the website, bnc.tv.